Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm happy to have on the show today, Joy Sweeney. She's the CEO of Woodhaven. They believe that everyone has the ability to add value in their communities. So Joy, can you give us a couple stats on the company? What's the employee headcount and how much revenue are you guys doing right now? Yes, our annual revenue is approximately 20 million, give or take. And we have 300 employees. And we just did an annual recognition dinner last night where we had 28 employees that totaled up to 300 years of service to the organization. We had one employee that had been here for 35 years last night that we were recognizing. So pretty impressive. That's amazing. So 35 years, how long has the company been established? We have been around for 60 years. This is our 60th anniversary. Woodhaven has been serving individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities for 60 years now. Wow. How did you originally get involved in the organization? Actually, that's an interesting story. My husband passed away a year ago, and I was truly floundering and absolutely lost. And all of a sudden, I don't know if he guided these people to me or what, but I was working in the D.C. metro area in Alexandria, Virginia, at a job that I thought I was going to be at for the rest of my career. And somebody from a recruiting firm sent me an email saying, we think you should come back to Missouri because I'd lived here for about 20 years before I went to D.C. And we think you should come back to Missouri. And I thought, okay, to be a CEO of Woodhaven. And I said, really? Me? I don't. And I looked at my first email to them and I said, I don't know that I'm a good fit. <laughs> they said, uh, we think you might be. and so. Four or five interviews later and throughout the whole process, uh, they ended up thinking that I was just what the organization needed. And I've been here for six months now. And I think they were pretty wise. And that's all I have to say. I can't imagine not being here. I can't imagine not being, not leading this organization. Every moment from the moment I arrived until just last night, has been truly a blessing. The opportunity to serve the individuals that we serve, the skills and the knowledge and the ability and my personality to help others, my desire, my imagest leadership style, which I'll briefly touch on that is basically it's a, an acronym, inspiration, motivation, acceptance, generosity, enthusiasm, spirituality, and thankfulness. And I use that every day in the work that I do to give back to the community, to give to the individuals that we serve, and to give to our staff to ensure that everyone is thriving, not just surviving. And that's basically what I brought to the table. The company that I was working for, the nonprofit, it was another nonprofit organization, served the entire nation and providing training for basically strategic planning and assessment, capacity building, planning, implementation, and evaluation throughout that whole process. And that is exactly what Woodhaven needed. And it's just amazing how it connects precisely to what I know and what I am as a person and what I believe and my values. And everything about it has been just such an incredible fit. The culture within the organization, people are telling me at lunch today, <laughs> people telling me how grateful they are that I've come to this organization, how much they've seen it transform in just the last six months, and how much of a blessing it is to the individuals for them to have a leadership team not just myself, but the rest of our team that is willing to give of themselves to truly help this organization thrive and help our individuals thrive. And really the angels are the people that are doing the work on a daily basis that are helping these individuals so that they can have quality of life and independence and autonomy and really be able to live with dignity. It's been amazing. Yeah, it really does sound amazing. Now, were you, have you acted as CEO in companies before? 
I was an executive director of a, a smaller nonprofit prior to this. Yes. So I had some leadership experience and then I was a deputy director at the national organization. And yes, leadership is definitely a skill that I have demonstrated prior to this. So I didn't have a tremendous amount of experience working with people with developmental and intellectual and neurodivergent populations, but uh, that's what everybody here had. <laughs> so they didn't need somebody <laughs> that had all the knowledge and the skills and the abilities that they have. They needed somebody that could come in and, and bring it all together and help us establish a solid foundation so that we can grow and provide the services to more individuals because daily we're hearing more about the lack of uh, services for people, neurodivergent people with autism and all along that spectrum. If you want a terminology, we use that terminology. We prefer to refer to it as people with differing abilities because they are very able and they are very capable. It's just different capabilities. And then also we have people with in other intellectual and developmental disabilities that want to work and want to be out in the community, providing, giving back to the community, what some people might uh, equate to taking from the system. They want to contribute and they just have not had the opportunity and living in congregate care doesn't provide people that opportunity, but living independently, living out in homes in the community where they can connect with their neighbors and connect in parks and connect throughout uh, other charitable organizations that, and give back to the food bank or give the river relief or whatever organ animal shelters, all different types of organizations that need people to help. And the individuals that we serve are willing and able to help and do these things as well as having jobs. And sometimes they just need the supports to transition them into these roles in the community. And that's another thing that Woodhaven is able to provide. And we are so excited to be able to say, okay, there's all these gaps in services. We can fill these gaps. There's so many people that are homeless. We have homes. Many of them have uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities and don't even know how to access those services. So we've got a benefits services specialist who's coming in and able to help them apply for the things that, that will help provide the supports that they need to really thrive and live their best lives. It's such a, it's so exciting. I know I speak with the utmost passion because I truly do have passion for the work that we do and want it to, want to provide it to more people. Everyone that needs this service, everyone that needs our help throughout the nation. Right now we're just operating in a small portion of central Missouri, but we would like to expand throughout the state and maybe some of the services that we could provide digitally, electronically, provide nationally, because there are ways to reach neurodivergent population through technology, which we all found out throughout the pandemic. <laughs> so we learned so much and the technology has advanced so much significantly. I think that that opportunity is also available to Woodhaven and, and we'd love to serve more people and do the good work all throughout the nation. You're running an organization of this size and doing so much good. It's no small feat to have 300 employees. What does a day in the life of Joy Sweeney look like now that you've taken on the role of Will Davin? Wow. Every day is different. <laughs> Today, let's see. We got to talk to a, a young man who was in a wheelchair, has been and was smiling because he had a delicious meal with a and got to be out of his home and be around other people. And another gal who got to come out and have a delicious meal with us. We had a lunch and learn experience uh, where a gentleman from the community talked about Black History Month this month. So we shared some information with many of the individuals that we serve, as well as our staff, about Black history and about some of the history locally, as well as throughout Missouri and throughout the nation. It was very interesting. Uh, many of our staff were truly fascinated and the individuals that we serve got to be part of this whole soul food luncheon that we had today. And it was marvelous. What a blessing. And that was today's 
big highlight. I was also on a call about helping more children in the community receive services that are in foster care or children with different abilities receive supports uh, from between school, respite for their parents who are constantly in demand to take care of them. So they can't even, many of whom can't get jobs or stay in, in jobs because their children get, keep getting called out of various daycares. So what can we do to fulfill that need? And then this afternoon, I'm meeting with a couple board members. Uh, we had, a, like I said earlier, the employee recognition dinner last night with 28 people who had been serving this organization for a total of 300 years. I still am floored by that, those numbers. And then the night before, we had a, bo a board meeting where we have 13 members of our community from various businesses and other nonprofits, a couple of universities uh, come and, and really help us, help guide our organization. We have people that want to sell us homes and donate cars and uh, different things like that and trying to reach out to various foundations and apply for different grants and then certifying reports. <laughs> Every day is different. Obviously, insurance and pension funds and all of those fun things and making sure we have budgets for the 35 homes that we run. And then the community connections program, I need to go over there and make sure that we have different partnerships for people to come in and do art projects or places for them to go bowling. And it's endless and it may sound exhausting, but it's exhilarating. It is absolutely exhilarating to have all of these wonderful things that we're able to offer and contribute to the community and have community partners that are willing to contribute to the individuals that we serve. We serve approximately 200 to 250 every year in various ways, in various programs mm -hmm. that we have. And as we are able to increase and expand those services, not counting guardians and parents and other people that we actually have in our various programs or our community partners and the uh, collaborative partnerships that we work in. We are the food bank. We provide food for hundreds and thousands of people throughout the year. And I don't, I'm not counting any of those people. <laughs> it's amazing. So how can our listeners help support the programs and initiatives of Woodhaven? Actually, .org. There's, it's a website. We have a website with a commercial about enrolling in our community connections program and or donating or coming to work here. Those are the commercials that we have running right now, but we're always accepting donations or foundation support. And there is a place to donate. If you have an extra car that you, <laughs> that you want to give us, basically any way or volunteerism, that's another tremendous if you're in the Missouri area, but it, throughout the nation, there's ways to donate and support and connect and find out what we're doing, we're always willing to share with other organizations. Having moved here from Virginia, I uh, have a friend who's starting, just started working with an organization back there that's trying to do what Woodhaven is doing in Virginia. And she asked me if we could help her. And so I'm willing to help in any way that I possibly can to help other organizations build similar style programs in various areas throughout the nation. And I think the more we work together, we're all stronger together, working together, collaborating and shared partnerships are the way of the future. Only, I could not have said that better myself. Everybody make sure to check out the Woodhaven website and learn more about everything Joy is doing there. And thank you everybody oh, for listening. We have a phone number if people want to call. Our office phone number is 573-876-7313. Please reach out to us, visit our website. We'd love to hear from anyone that either would help adding to the services in their community or would like to help us. Thank you, Joy, for coming on the show and everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to give us a five-star review and we'll see you next time.